Hi everyone and welcome to Craftmas episode 2. So today is the first day that I'm going to be filming for this video and I'm just going to be showing you what I did today. So today I worked on making things for my ebook. The first thing that I made were these little oven mittens or oven mitts I think is how you call them in some block print fabric and then I did a bias binding on top and then a contrasting little loop that you can hang them up by so they look like this and then they're completely quilted i think these turned out very cute they took around two hours or maybe one and a half to sew and i'm going to give these tonight to my aunt and i think she will like them she likes purple i made this probably a bit too small like it fits me fine and i think it will fit, fit most women or people with more narrow hands fine but I think for the ebook I'm going to include another size so I will have to make maybe another one. I'm not sure if I'm going to make another sample but for sure it will have two sizes. Oh my god I look... <laughs> I saw myself in a viewfinder and I look really ridiculous when I do this. But it's more small is what I'm trying to say. But I think they turn out very cute and I also tried them out today with my lunch. And I had a hot pan and they worked perfectly. Then after that I made some quilted coasters. These didn't turn out the best. I made them, like I bound them with bias tape and I'm just really not good at bias tape. So this was my original ID. So they are quilted and then with a little ruffle, but then I also did bias binding. So I will show you the first one that I did. And this one is really horrendous, so please keep it in mind. But here, this is the right side and here it looks fine. But then you will see the back. And this is what I mean with I'm bad at bias binding. <laughs> it looks very bad. And then also there are some places where I just sewed the ruffle a little bit weird, like here, for example. So they are not the best, but I think from afar they work. So I will be using these just around the house. And I think they are good enough for the ebook that this is not for beginners. And I'm quite an experienced sewer and this was still really difficult for me, or maybe it's just that I'm not good at this. But since I really want this ebook also to be really suitable for beginners, I think I will have to come up with another way. Then the final thing that I made today was this little hair bow. But I made this completely from leftovers and then I just sewed them all together and put them in a little bow. And then this is just sewn by hand. So on the back they have this little clip that opens like that. And actually today I'm also wearing one of the bows in my hair. But this is just a plain one that I have in my shop. So this is going to be one that you can make for yourself. But of course you can also just make it without the patchwork. That will also be included in the pattern. So those are the little things more work related for my ebook. Then yesterday I also started a new knitting project. Of course in my new knitting project bag. It is the Augustine's number 14 by Augustine's Knitwear. I'm knitting it in a white color, which at first I was not sure about it. I kind of intended the yarn to be in another project. But then I looked on Instagram and actually a lot of people have knit this in white or cream and I thought it looked very cute. So I think I'm just gonna stick with it because it's the yarn that I have. But I think it's going to be very cute. And I'm knitting this in Drops Flora, which is a fingering weight yarn held together with Drops Brushed Alpaca, which they say is an errand weight yarn. The pattern calls for fingering held together with two lace weight mohair. So I figured that the brushed alpaca from Drops would substitute the two strands of lace weight mohair. And also I much more prefer alpaca over mohair. It's definitely like a looser gauge or more see-through garment. But I usually wear a t-shirt underneath all of my sweaters anyway, so for now I will just continue knitting this. And if it's really too see-through when I come at a later stage, then maybe it will have to be frogs. But let's hope not. That is kind of my main work in progress right now. I probably should finish the other whips that I have going. But I kind of just thought to myself that December is just going to be like a month that doesn't count. Like just knit gifts knit festive things it does really matter and then the whips that i have going on right now i can just catch up with them in january and it's not going to be that big of a deal 
As I mentioned, today is the 5th of December, so it's a Dutch holiday. So I will be leaving later today to go to family and to celebrate the holiday. And then I'm also going to wrap the gifts for my sister now. And I really hope that they arrive really quickly and soon because I'm just really excited and eager for her to see them. And then I have some boring laundry to fold and then I think that's it for today. So I will see you tomorrow. just checking back in today is wednesday december the 6th i had kind of a little bit of a weird day i woke up just also feeling really tired and unmotivated which you know sometimes you feel like that then i had a doctor's appointment and then after that i was extremely tired i also had to get my blood drawn so maybe it had something to do with that i do feel a bit better now but overall i'm still feeling a little bit you know all over the place I think and because I'm feeling that way I'm not working today and whenever I don't work I always have this little bit of a guilty feeling just because I have customers that are waiting for their package or waiting for me to sew up their order and it's not like I'm really behind on anything but I've just always had this feeling with having my business that I feel like I have to explain myself when I'm not working and there's always something to be done. So I know it's okay to take a break, but then I always feel guilty and it's really annoying. So that's how I'm feeling today. But I do have something fun to show because yesterday I had the Sinterklaas celebration and I was gifted this really lovely knitting book by my cousin. And I did ask for this, but then I removed it from my list because it was a little bit over budget and I didn't want to seem like I was asking for something but it's this book, 260 Exquisite Patterns by Hitomi Shida. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And it's a Japanese knitting stitch bible. And it's the most beautiful knitting book that I have ever seen. And it had been on my wish list for quite a while. I'm super happy to now have this book in my possession. And I can just spend, I think, hours just looking at all of the different stitches that are in here. And then there are also four patterns in the book. And I really want these socks in a nice brown color. So I just got some of that. But this is how they look. And then I was also gifted this really lovely perfume. It's like a tiny perfume. And I don't really have any perfume. So I don't wear any. But I'm really happy to have this. Because it is nice to just put on a nice fragrance when you're going out. So I'm happy with this. It's by Lancome. And it's called La Vie Es Belle. And it's a really nice quite fruity and sweet smell. I was knitting the Augustines number 14 and I just wasn't really happy with the way that it looked. I casted it on yesterday so I only had like five centimeters of it knit just from the rib on the top and I think the result or the end result it would have been too opaque and see-through for me. Drops brushed alpaca silk. If you can see like this it has a really fluffy halo and it's obviously nice that it's such a fluffy yarn but when it's knit up in a looser gauge, I feel like that also makes the strands looser and it tends to come out more. And I do not like that. I know that for me, I'm not going to wear a sweater that behaves like that, where all the fluff comes in my mouth. And I think if I knit it at a smaller needle or a tighter gauge, that will be less. So I was looking at Sari Norklund's hair patterns because I'm basically obsessed with everything that she designs. I think that's also because... A lot of designs that she knits are similar to the Japanese knitting stitches and I think she also uses some of those or changes them. She right now also has a knit along for the turtle dove scarf and I really want to cast it on. 
But I just don't really have any yarn in my stash that I would want to use it. For a lot of the yarns I have a fingering weight, like hand dyed, but then I don't have anything to hold it with. And then I don't really want to make it also with a hand dyed type of yarn. I just want a solid. And then I have solid yarns, but then I don't have the mohair. And it kind of goes like that. So I did get some yarn also for the for this because I really want to knit it. I'm going to knit the Seid sweater, I think is how you pronounce it. And I'm absolutely in love with this design. I don't know how I never like noticed it before. And I think it's to do with the color because her sample is knit well in a very beautiful rusty orange color. But when you see this sweater from afar, the stitch definition, the bubbles and the cables that are in it just get lost. Now I do really understand why designers always knit in like light gray, beige, whites and those types of colors. Because it just shows the design off much more. When you look at the project pages, there are also some people that knit this in white or cream. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. So that's definitely what's going to happen with this white and cream yarn. That's something that I'm going to cast on today. I think after this little video I'm going to just watch a Christmas movie and chill out and try to not feel bad about working. But I'm going to cast on some Christmas socks and watch a Christmas movie and I think that will also really cheer me up. I had intended to cast this on on December 1st and that obviously did not happen. So I kind of forgot about it but now just looking at it it's making me very happy and giving me all the Christmas vibes that I need right now. And I think I will see you tomorrow. Hi everyone and welcome to the last little segment of Craftmas episode 2. Today is already Saturday the 9th of December and I didn't really film any talking bits this past Thursday or Friday. That was because Thursday was a really busy day for me. I was sewing a bunch of dresses and then shipping them out. And then yesterday on Friday I kind of had an off day because I had the first call with my new therapist to get started in the new year. So. Then the whole day I kind of just felt off. And usually that would kind of take down my whole day and bring down my mood. But then I decided not to let that happen and to kind of try to make the best of my day. So I didn't get any work done, but I did have a lot of fun because I was making the Dawn Jeans by Megan Nielsen, which is a pattern that I've had in my well sewing pattern collection for a few years actually. And I started this podcast almost a year ago. That's exactly what I said, that maybe I would also share some sewing because I want to do so more sewing for myself instead of only for my business. And now a year later, I finally have accomplished that goal. Yesterday I made these jeans. I made them from a corduroy fabric with 3% elastane. So they are really nice and comfortable. They just need some buttons. So I have chosen the exposed button fly which she has a blog post on her website for. So it's not included in the instructions 
that are in the pattern booklet. I made a straight size 2, if you're wondering. And then when I was trying them on, I did have to take the waist in a little bit. So for the next time, it is good for me to know that, that I have to grade the waist to be just a little bit smaller. I think I'm more the hips of the size 2 and then the waist of the size 0. Then I also had to take in the back yoke a little bit. So in the pattern, this comes up at least two centimeters higher, but I removed a little bit of fabric there. I think in the next pair, maybe I have to take fabric from this part instead of the yoke. Also, I have the ring light here again. So the lightning is a little bit weird, but it's just very dark early. So I cannot do anything about it. I made the white leg view. In the next video, I will have the buttons on and then I can show you how they look on. And they are also the perfect length right now. So I'm just really happy with how they turned out. And it was one of the most fun that I've had sewing in a very long time. So I would really recommend if you also have a business where you do sewing or whatever you do, if you always do the same thing, it kind of becomes less fun. So just take the time to do something else just for yourself, not for your business, not to sell and just have fun with it. And that's what I did. And it was a great decision. I wanted to show you where I'm at with my current works in progress. And then after that, I also have a little bit of a yarn haul for you. So the first thing that I have that is my main work in progress right now are my Christmas socks. I have not really worked on a lot of other things. I've only worked on the ribbing for my sweater that I will show you afterwards. But this has been my main whip. And I'm just loving how all of these stripes are working up. And I'm just knitting on and on and on. And then I'm going to do an afterthought heel. So I've already put in a little bit of a lifeline here in some pink yarn. And then I'm going to do a contrasting toe and heel in a bright pink sock yarn hand dyed that I still have. And I think that will really add a really nice fun pop of color. Not that this needs any more color, but just a fun something else, something unexpected. These are my two main work in progress right now. So I've abandoned all of my other works in progress. And it's the Sadie sweater by Sari Nordland. And I've only done the ribbing. I think I'm going to do maybe one or two centimeters more of this ribbing. And then I'm going to start doing the chart. I'm kind of also procrastinating it because it's new. The ribbing I'm doing on three and a half millimeters. Then the rest of the sweater she needs on four millimeter needles. But I'm thinking I'm going to size up to four and a half, just because I think that will give me a nicer fabric. And I wouldn't mind it becoming bigger and more oversized. Now for the last thing of this craftmas video, I wanted to show you the yarn haul that I have. I got one hand dyed yarn skein. And then I also just got some drops yarn because I have a lot of accessories planned. So I'm going to show you those. First off, we have the hand dyed yarn. This is a blend of merino, cashmere, and then I think nylon. So it's 80% merino and the rest is then cashmere and nylon. It has 355 meters for 100 grams. So it's a little bit less, I would say, than your usual sock yarn. Although I'm not going to be knitting socks with this. I think it's way too pretty for a pair of socks. Not to say that socks don't deserve pretty yarn. But when I get nice hand dyed yarn, I want to use it for a garment, personally. I'm going to probably be using it with a hot pink mohair that I have in my stash on a cone. And then I want to knit a little shawl or scarf from Sari Nordland. But I'm a little bit confused because I also have other yarn that I got for that. So I have to look at the yardage again and the colors and really decide what I want. Because I have the Lalu shawl pattern that I got on sale. And then I also really want to get her new pattern, the turtle dove shawl that is currently a knit along. First off, the two yarns that aren't for a shawl. I got two drops flora in the magenta color and I got these to knit a hat. I saw that she has actually a ripped hat pattern, sorry Northland, that I really like. And she also knitted in this color and I'm just in love with it. I think it would be really nice. I kind of have a vision for an outfit in my head that I want a wool boucle white coat, which I have the fabric for. I just need to sew it paired with these corduroy pants and then a bright pink hat. I think that's a really cute outfit. Then I also picked up two 
skeins for socks. I got these two, Drop Snort, just in a really nice brown color. And I got these because I was gifted the knitting book that I showed you, the Japanese knitting stitches. And there is a really cute sock pattern in there. And I think those socks would be really nice in this color. And then here are my options for the shawl. First off, we have Drop Skit Silk. And I thought I would never get this yarn again, but then I did. And I'm actually... I hold it up to my neck and it doesn't itch at all. So I don't know what's up with me or if I'm allergic to mohair. This is in a really beautiful cherry pink kind of color. I believe they call it like cherry sorbet. And then I'm going to pair it with this Drops Flora. And I think these colors go nicely. I just got one of each. So this is going to be a smaller scarf. Just because the Drops Flora only has 210 meters. And I know that most of her patterns she knits with Knitting for Olive Merino, which has about 250 meters. And then the other yarn that I have for a little shawl or scarf is also Drops Flora with Drops Kit Silk. Just the difference is that I have two of the Drops Flora and just one of the Drops Kit Silk. Just because the Drops Kit Silk also has a tiny bit more yardage. Oh no, it doesn't. Then I don't know why I got two of these. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> But actually I do have some brown Siri in my stash that matches this color and I have two of those. So maybe that's a better decision and then I can use this for something else. I think maybe I bought two of them on accident. The Lalu shawl I think I planned that in the pink and then the turtle dove shawl which has bubbles and such I think I'm going to do in the brown or in a bright pink color. That would also be a fantastic yarn choice. Maybe that's what I will do. I will probably cast those on tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Sunday and there's going to be a lot of rain, I believe. So it's just going to be a relaxing day, probably full of knitting, just staying at home, which is also what I did today. I really love the weekends. It's basically the time for me to knit and to not really do anything or to think about anything. And I hope the weekend is the same for you. And I also hope that you enjoyed watching this Craftmas episode too. And I will hopefully see you in the next Craftmas episode, which will be episode 3. So yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.